Good morning to you from the Newberry Church of Christ. I'm Jess Carter. I'd like to talk to you this morning about uh, manly men behind great men. We think about this a lot of times we think of great people. But so oftentimes great people are great because of those people that have supported and been behind them and encouraging them through their life. I'm thinking of one of those men that his very name means manly. And that is Andrew. The name Andrew that's in the Bible means manly. We think of Andrew a lot of times that he is just uh, those that know the Bible. We say, well, and Andrew, that's Peter's brother. He's always just uh, known as Peter's brother so oftentimes. But we can find that he was much more than that in the first century. He was a manly man. He was a man that was looked upon by those around about him. We can tell this. If we look at the very first passage, when we see him, is in John, there in John chapter 1. In John uh, chapter 1, when we talk about him, we see him first showed up in verse 35. It says, again, the next day John stood with two of his disciples, and looking at Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. There was two disciples there. And when those two disciples heard what John said about Jesus, it says in, in verse uh, uh, 40 that he went and they followed after him. It says, verse 40, one of the two who heard John speak these words, it says, speak those that followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. Even there, when talking to him years after this happened, John referred to him, and, and still referred to him as Peter's brother, clarifying the people who he was. But who was he? A disciple of John, a person that had heard that the Messiah was coming. A person whose God's word and God was important in their life. But you know, when he found out and he saw who it was, I like what it said in the next two verses. In John there 1 and 41 and 42, it says, He first found his own brother, Simon, and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated to Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. That what? Now, when, Je when Jesus looked at him, he said, You are Simon, the son of Jonah. You shall be called Cephas, which is translated a stone. This, this man, Jesus said, and we know him as Peter. He was Peter. But Peter came to Jesus. He was a stone. He was that one that preached that first sermon in Acts 2. He stood up and raised his voice above the others and spoke to them and said, That same Jesus whom you crucified is both Lord and Christ. But he came to Jesus because of his manly brethren. He thought enough of his brother that he followed him. Did you think about that? He thought enough of his brother that he followed him and he became the great preacher of the gospel. But you know, Andrew's effect, manly man, did not stop there. We see again later the lad, if we look at John chapter 6, in John chapter 6, verse 8 and 9, we find there where they had preached thousands who came out to listen to Jesus preach. But then they was hungry. They had no food. And all of a sudden, verse 8, it says that one of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, said to Jesus, said this, Here is a lad, there is a lad here who has five barley loaves and two small fishes. But but what are they among so many? Here it was, a whole crowd, thousands of people around about. And this young lad, who did he disclose his food to? But to Andrew. He, he didn't come to Peter. He didn't come to him. And he said, but he came to Andrew. He felt like he was able to go and bring it and brought it forth to what? Andrew, we look at the feeding of the 5,000, and we look so often times, and we 
think about the young lad. We think about the barley loaves and the two fishes. But we need to also realize Andrew, his part in that, that manly man, that he was a man that even a young lad could come to and said, I have these. Sharing with Jesus, and Jesus shared with all of them. But you know, Andrew, it doesn't stop there. I love this in John chapter 12. A great story there in John chapter 12 and verse 20. Starting 12 and 20. We find there what had happened. There was certain Greeks. It says, now, there was certain Greeks among those who came up to worship at the feast. And they came to Philip of Galilee and asked him, saying, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. So Philip, they came to Philip and said, hey, we want to see Jesus. Well, what would Philip do? What, what would he do? You know what he did? He saw comfort, advice, or whatever you might say from the man that we're talking about here, Andrew. Because look at what happened here in the next verse. In verse 21, it says, Then they came to Philip, and he said, Sir, what, you know, we wish to see Jesus. And then Philip came and told Andrew. He, Philip came and told what? Andrew. Why did he go to Andrew? <laughs> because he had that much respect and realized who Andrew was. And he went to him and he said that he told Andrew. And in turn, Andrew and Philip told Jesus. Andrew and Philip. You see how Andrew took his brother to Jesus. He took the lad to Jesus. He took the Greeks that was asked in question, wanted to see Jesus. He took them, and, and even Philip, he took them to Jesus. Today, my friend, I plead that we need more Andrews in the Lord. We need more Andrews out there, not trying to be great, but trying to be people that's leading others, taking others to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God be with you till we meet.